Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Paul. I've got a huge week planned next week, heading off to the Flinders Ranges um, and also doing a camper trailer review for Maverick Campers, taking out one of their brand new camper trailers. But this old girl doesn't have electric brakes and most new camper trailers these days you all need electric brakes for. So I fit Red Arc electric brakes every single week at work and it's the only one I want on my car. So we, today we're gonna run through how to install this. All right, let's get to it. Now, being honest as usual, this brake controller kit was supplied to me from Red Arc, but like I said, I really wouldn't use any other controller on my car. Let's open it up and see what you get. This is the version three, which is pretty new out. It's only been out about a year. Get your brake controller unit, your switch and the knob. They recently changed to cardboard as well, recycled cardboard. Um, these all used to be plastic in the version two, so they're obviously environmentally conscious. There's no plastic in this at all anymore, which is really good. Just something I noticed. And you open up this one here. You have a full instruction guide, stickers and everything else. You have your lead that plugs in here and goes to your knob. Um, you have your little threaded little nut that goes over the top of this, we'll do later. And your power lead, we'll run through each of these wires. They've made this wiring so incredibly easy that anyone with even just a moderate 12 volt knowledge could install this themselves as long as they follow the appropriate steps. There's some very important steps that you have to follow, otherwise you'll have issues. Wiring is extremely easy. Black wire, normally that would be in earth. This one here is your 12 volt supply. White wire, that's your earth. It even states on there battery negative. So you can't mix them up. The positive has got a big yellow stick on it. So you can't mix that up. The blue is your output wire. That'll go all the way back to your trailer plug, which will go to your tra trailer. And the red is your pickup wire. That'll connect either to your brake switch or it'll go all the way back to your tail light. I can't tell you how excited I am to finally have the motor back in this car. There's been no motor in here for the past month. I just got the car back last night. <laughs> I'm very excited. Now, first thing we want to start off with some four mil twin core. We're going to run that through the firewall inside here. What I've done to get it through the firewall, I've got a piece of wire here. Um, you can use an old coat hanger at home, whatever you've got. Just cut a little piece off of it. I've sharpened the end. Just be careful though, when you're going through your grommets, you don't want to pierce your factory wiring harnesses because that would be an <laughs> absolute disaster to try and repair that wiring. You would never be able to get to it. So just be extremely careful when you're piercing through your grommets. Um, a bit of silicon spray or some sort of lubricant makes it a lot easier to get through as well. Being rubber, it just doesn't want, it's very tight trying to get through. So just be persistent and careful and you'll get there. Once you run your wiring through the firewall, what you want to do is find a suitable mounting location for the brake controller unit. I'll run through mounting in a minute and then pull through the length of wire you need to reach that location, split your wiring up, put a couple of pieces of heat shrink on each of the wires prior, and then solder your positive and your negative together, and then we'll go from there. This is the step where I can't stress how important this is. If you get this wrong, you can cause damage to your car, you can cause damage to the brake controller. So be very careful about this step here, depending on what car you have. If you have an older car like mine, um, a lot of them have a brake switch on your brake pedal that you can pick up a 12 volt signal from. You want it to be able to create a 12 volt signal when the brake's pushed and zero volts once the brake's not pushed. Um, if you find that wire, then you can pick up off of that. But if you have got a newer car, especially in the last year or two, um, anything with pre-crash sort of thing, um, because of the CAN bus, it makes it very hard now to pick up off of that brake switch. It'll interfere with all the ECUs and everything else, and it's more hassle than it's worth. So speak with Red Arc first prior to installing on your car, find out what sort of kit you need for your car. They make a heap of pre-wired kits ready to go for your car, so it makes installation a lot easier than doing it like this manually. But for my older car, they don't make the kits for an older car, so, but they'll definitely help you out with your model car it's very important you get that right. Now, because I can't pick up the brake switch here, um, it's way too hard to get to. 
what I'm going to do now is run some more four mil twin core all the way to the back. That way I'll pick up my brake signal from my tail lights. It's probably the safest spot if, you, if in doubt, always pick up the tail lights. You know, it's already passed all the ECUs. It's the safest spot to pick up. Um, and then we're also going to, in that twin core, we're going to run our blue wire all the way down to the trailer plug. When it comes time to soldering the other two four mil twin core to the back of the car, I've made it pretty easy here. I've just put up red to the red brake switch wire and black to the blue wire. That way, by the time I get down to the other end of the car, I can easily remember red is brake wire. Remember when you're running any type of wire outside of a car or in the engine bay, you want to protect it in converter tubing. Now that I've run the twin core all the way to the back, I cable tie it every 30 centimetres along the chassis, either to the chassis or um, find an existing wiring limb you can cable tie to and make sure you do it every 30 centimetres. Once you've got it to the back here, if you can find your tow bar trailer wiring ECU, right next to that, um, there should be a little blue wire where you can just solder straight to that blue wire and the factory harness will automatically lead down to your trailer plug here. But in my case, I don't have that. So I've got to run that blue wire all the way to here into pin five in the trailer plug. Um, and then the brake wire, I'll tap straight off the brake light right here. When it comes to mounting the brake controller unit, it has to be a very solid mount. It can't move, so don't cable tie it to any wiring limbs or anything like that. It has to be in a fixed position. So what I've done here, I've just got a piece of 25 flat, drilled a few holes here with some M4 bolts straight through it with a hole here, which is going to go into a manning location. Preferably, you want to try and find two manning locations, two bolt holes. That way it's nice and secure. Um, I'm going to have to do this up incredibly tight so it doesn't move. But that's all I can find in this car. Now, if you don't have to use a 25 flat, you can just use a piece of flat steel if you like, drill the holes you need, and mount the unit straight to that. Now, we're going to plug this cable in now before we mount it. Makes it a lot easier. Clip it straight in as we're putting it in. We also plug the other cable in the other end too, and then we mount it straight up. Otherwise, it can be quite difficult to try and put your hands up and plug these in later on. Red Arc offer a range of switch inserts that will plug straight in your dash, just blanking plugs that go into your dash. Now, I don't have one for my car, but I do have one to suit pretty much every single car on the market. So what I'm going to have to do is drill a hole in the middle here. They give you a template in the instructions, so it's very easy to do. And then stick the plug through here, put that little threaded knob over the top there and then the knob over that. I actually had to hollow out the back of this blanking plug as it was solid and I couldn't fit the switch in there so I had to use a die grinder to hollow that out. Now the switch is in the back. The plastic nut is threaded to the top and done up. Now grab your little dial, turn the knob all the way to the left first and line your dial up with zero up the top and push it straight on. And when you do that you know you've got it lined up perfectly. Rather than pulling my dash apart, I simply fed a draw wire through the blanking plug hole down to the bottom of the dash. I taped the plug to the draw wire, pulled it through, and now I have the plug here ready to go. To plug straight into that, and it, that bit's done. Now that we've finished all the wiring in here, what we want to do, tidy up all the excess wiring, um, cable tied up nice and neatly under the dash. Make sure you don't get it caught in any um, pedals or anything. You don't want it jamming on anything or rubbing on anything so be very careful with how you tie it up and then we'll pull the excess four mil twin core through the firewall again and we'll fuse at the front we're nearly done i've just convoluted this wiring heading back to the firewall here the negative i'm going to go off the battery you can either go off the battery or a body earth uh, and the positive i'm using a 25 amp fuse otherwise you can use a 30 amp circuit breaker and that's it and then we'll test it now it's all done i've plugged in the test board to the trailer plug here to test it out now, when I put my foot on the brake, you should see the red brake light glow as well as the white electric brake light. There you go. And you should be able to adjust that knob and it will adjust the intensity of the brakes. Now, when you first plug in your trailer, it should be flashing green and blue. That way you know you've done everything right. If it flashes any other colors, um, there's a troubleshooting guide in the back which explains all the different color codes for all the different codes that's wrong with the car. And that's it, that's all there is to it. Like I said, it's very simple. Pretty much anyone can do it. It's only four wires. You just gotta be very careful of that red wire. Um, some vehicles like the Ford Rangers, uh, you can't wire it up at all without using Red Arc's special harness. So be very careful, contact Red Arc first, ask for them for advice for your particular car. Um, it takes me about two to three hours to fit one of these brake controllers. 
um, maybe a bit quicker if you're using one of the genuine harnesses. And if you've got any more questions, guys, don't hesitate to leave a comment. I'm always happy to answer. There's lots of different variations to these, so ask away, don't be shy. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have liked it, leave a like. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It really helps my channel. But thanks for watching the video, guys, and I'll catch you the next one. Cheers.